Hi guys, um, this is going to be a, a bit of a different video for me. Uh, been much inspired by Guido's help um, um, video, and uh, well, uh, I haven't done any anything of this sort uh, except for a few shout outs. Um, I, I wanted to address a few. Uh, discussions that um, have been um, around the community. Uh, Handy, Andy as um, you know Tactical Jackalope has done a few um, bits and bobs too about this these themes uh, probably in a much more effective way than I will be able to do uh, but I wanted to make some points across and um, I wanted to uh, address uh, those uh, same issues. Uh, I'll also take this opportunity to uh, make a few shout outs and um, and uh, this will be probably my first waffle because I think there's a lot of things that it's kind of it's not that I've been avoiding but it's been um, It's been more in the back of my mind. I've been thinking about them. I have, I have of course, I have opinions, but you know, you know how those are. Uh, everyone has one, um, and I'm sometimes I'm not sure uh, that the way you know each one of us thinks about things. Um, I don't think I, I tend not to think that the way I think about things. Is the correct way. I just think it's just another way, whether it's technique or anything else. To me, it's just um, the way I like to do things or the way I think about it. It's not necessarily something I want to um, impose or uh, want others to follow. But still, you know, um, it's it's time for me, I think, to uh, address a few issues. So I wanted to start first of all. You know, addressing the the whole um, aftermarket and photo edge uh, discussion that was started by uh, Aaron, um, and then and then you know um, um, added on by a few other great models like uh, Cohen or or Andy, who, uh, and probably many more that I haven't yet heard about. Uh, oh, and Norm, of course, Norm had a very nice um, opinion. Uh, much of which I agree with um, when Cohen did his second tools video and talked about um, AK products. And when I say AK products, I say ammo uh, or make pro products. It's, it's all the same thing, or at least very similar. Um, I'll start by, by addressing uh, first the, the, um, the photo edge part, and then I'll, I'll, I'll go on to the, to the uh, washers and uh, all those effects that are uh, right now very uh, trendy. So uh, I mostly agree with Aaron. Uh, I think, uh, and I've built a few kits out of the box, and I like them the way they are. I don't need to slap on a photo edge. Uh, in fact, my way of uh, viewing photo edge is um, if it improves the model, okay. You know, if it, if it improves the model, it's, it's just fine. But if the model comes with a plastic part that is as good, or maybe even better than the photo edge part, then I'll go, I'll go with the plastic part. And to me, that's it. Because, um, uh, like Andy said on his video, on his last uh, channel update, I'm more of a painter than a builder. To me, uh, I want to build, I want to build well, as, as, be as best as I can. But mostly, I want to get to the painting stages uh, and being myself uh, someone who uh, uh, likes to paint uh, either on a model or a, on a canvas or even on a person, um, to me painting is uh, my ultimate expression. Now I don't mean to say that builders aren't um, artistic or creative, they can be, uh, building um, can have Creativity, I mean, all the battle damage and, and all that beautiful thing, all those beautiful things that uh, great builders do, like uh, Guido or um, like Cohen, um, they do wonderful things. They texture the models, they, they take great care.
to uh, make an accurate, uh, beautiful, and also um, well-painted model. They might not use as many techniques or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I like their, the, the way they think, I like the way they do things. I like, I much admire them. Uh, in every way uh, you can admire a modeler. Um, and so, um, but to me, I'm a painter. I, I, I like to I like to paint. Uh, and when I say I'm a painter, is um, regarding models. Uh, I like the build. I take pleasure in it. In it. But to me, it's about the painting. Uh, I love the, the layering. I love the weathering. The, the story you can um, tell by by what you know by. Um, seeing how battered a, a model was uh, or looks and you can almost um, read some the history of the subject almost in, in there uh, and that's to me that's a beautiful thing I, I love it and um, it's, it's kind of my expression as for PE and uh, f um, aftermarket um, I haven't used a lots of it um, I do have a few photo edge sets uh, I do love uh, gun barrels, they make our lives so much easier and uh, the results are simply just better and uh, I've recently uh, completed, or well not completed, but been building this, um, my grasshopper and it's a, it's a plastic gun barrel and I tried to make, you know, the best work that I could but I still feel that um, I had mixed results so with a with a metal metal gun barrel um, i would have been uh, more successful uh, in a way um, of course it, it isn't a, it isn't a reason not to do a model uh, if i don't have any aftermarket for a model i'll do it out of the box i don't care uh, to me uh, it looks good it looks good uh, i don't even um, think it's uh, more or less complete, more or less accurate. Uh, I share Aaron's and Cohen's um, and Andy's uh, vision, which is if it looks, um, uh, and I'm going to quote uh, Aaron on this one, uh, if it looks like a Super Saber, um, and after a while it still looks like a Super Saber, then it's uh, it's a Super Saber. So um, it's, it's, um, it's, that's the, the way I think about uh, all the aftermarket um, Thing. Now, uh, just like with the uh, premixed products, um, what I think happens here, and this is probably the waffling, most of the waffling part, is there's a hype. Um, either that hype is created amongst amongst the modelers in forums and uh, local club meetings, um, shows, um, you know, through marketing tools. Or um, it's simply sometimes the modelers themselves, like um, so many other um, areas of our lives and, and, and observable um, hobbies, you can you can see um, people like to compete um, in this regard. So it's it becomes less of the you know I built this, I want to build that, or something like that. Uh, it becomes more of a, a shopping spree um, to have more stuff put on the model than your um, neighbor modeler, your uh, your fellow modeler. I don't like that, of course, and, uh, and on that regard, I so agree with everyone else because it's it's not it's not um, the aftermarket that makes the model at all. Um, I have seen on forums um, beautifully built models. Um, that after being painted looked bland and flat and um, all that detail almost goes out of the window I mean it, it it's you know it's there so it, it kind of um, excuse your perception but I mean I think it was um, yesterday I've seen a bit of uh, Pezzerman's uh, bill uh, and he said um, something like or to the effect of um, these old figures just need a bit more brushwork to make them look good and uh, I know they will never, I, mean, I believe that, I know they'll never um, 
look as good as uh, you know resin figures. It's it's no way, the detail simply isn't there, but they can look decent. Um, so I think, well, I agree uh, with Aaron, Colin, and, and, and Norm, and Andy, and a, a lot of guys in that regard. Uh, now, I like I said, I do buy uh, aftermarket, uh, probably just the essential. Uh, to me, the word is time-saving. Um, I need, I don't have much time to, to model, so I need all the tools I can get, and that's what they are, tools, all the tools I can get to save me time. Um, so uh, that it is kind of a bridge onto my next subject, which is um, these guys. What we have here is a, a selection of a few um, AK products. And the reason I have them here is very simple. I want to show you um, what Cohen has been explaining on his uh, video about uh, the, the, the washes and, and all that. Uh, I want to show you how uh, right he is about this. I want to show you the different dilutions of these products and what they basically are, although they are more complex than simply uh, thinner and paint. They, they are a bit more complex than that. They, some of them probably have uh, matte varnish or satin varnish or uh, gloss varnish and probably they do have a few other um, stabilizers because they don't set as badly as my homemade uh, washes. So, and I do make homemade washes for certain um, ends. Um, I can show you, for example, these are two filters. Um, supposedly, the filters are 90% uh, thinner and 10% paint. And I can actually show you this on this example here. This bottle has been sitting on my shelf for a long time. So you can actually see the 10% paint ratio to the 90% thinner. This is a filter. Uh, the same goes for this one here. Now, uh, I w I'd like to point out uh, a, a couple of things, which is, which are, um, they're not always exactly the same ratio of paint to thinner. The reason for that is, most of the time, you want to have different effects. And, you know, streaking grime depends on the type of streaking grime you want to have will have different dilutions, uh, but more or less the ratio um, is similar. So next I want to show you that same example. I'm going to show you two uh, samples of um, sorts of grime and sweeping grime and as you can see here it's about 30, 20 to 30 percent uh, ratio between paint and thinner or uh, thinner in other products. Um, as for the washes, um, it's more or less the same thing. Uh, these are a bit different. They are between 15 to 25 percent usually. Uh, ratio between thinner and paint. Mind you that these are a bit dark, so it's a bit different to see. But uh, this one here, for example, has about um, I would should say 30, 25 to 30 percent. This should have around 20% of paint to thinner ratio. Then we have the uh, so-called uh, uh, you know, dust effects and on earth effects and, and, and these are a different matter altogether and the reason for that is the different dilutions are made according to the theme or to the usage you're going, you're going to give your, your products and um, in that regard uh, I have here Kursk's Earth and Africa Dust Effects and as I will show you they, they do have uh, dramatically different ratios between um, paint to thinner ratio. But roughly, roughly you can see and you can observe and you can experiment very much with these products. I, I used to um, make these products for myself um, and I've done so for a, for a while uh, but there are some disadvantages to that. Uh, I learned 
very fast that you could not use um, great amounts of it because it would set, it would clump, the pigment would clump and um, so you always have to, to make small batches, at least with me that happened. Uh, might have been some mistake I made but I've tried oils, I've tried enamels and in big quantities always the same happened which was you usually got um, clumps of paint that wouldn't break and um, they were much harder to stir than these. These usually, as you can see, this one here is a set, but I just have to shake it for a while. Not, not much, not, not long, not for long. And what you have is a perfectly mixed mixture of this, of this product. So, it's, uh, there's something else in here, it's true, um, but for small batches, you can use this. These are just a small example of what you can use. You can also use oils. I use these a lot. I like them. I also use these sometimes. Um, uh, so I mix, sometimes I mix uh, just the paint. Uh, I usually mix my, my, my uh, washes from these two, uh, which will provide more of a burnt umber gradation. Um, Depending on the ratios I apply, I usually uh, apply different ratios to different results. You can do streaking grime. You can do. You can make um, streaking grime. You can make washes. Uh, I would not advise using this as filters. And for that, I would advise you to use oils, which is or they are just as fine. They work just as well. Sometimes, uh, probably even better. Um, I sometimes make. Um, also fuel stains with this. So for that I have this glossy uh, enamel um, clear that I mix with these uh, paints diluted with white spirit. Uh, by the way, uh, artists create white spirit is what I advise otherwise it would probably damage or uh, at least break the bonds of a few uh, parts on your model. So what I do is I mix all, all three of them in different ratios or uh, just these two which are flat um, to acquire uh, or to make uh, different uh, products, simulate different products. I still use these. Uh, I have a pre-mixed one right here. See, I used an Altenia enamel thinner bottle and I have them mixed here. See, um, I can also use these which are basically the same thing but uh, from another brand, I just wanted to show you the different uh, possibilities you have uh, with these uh, earth colors to uh, either use them the same way you could use these or including uh, to change these uh, formulas appearances. Let's say for example, I like the ratio of dilution of this product here, I like it. I like its base color, but I want to add some variety to the earth effects. What I usually do is I mix a few other uh, tones based on this one. So I use the base one unmixed, and then I mix it with different shades of uh, you know brown or earth color, earth tone, or with another product. But usually I just use I drip a few drops of enamel paint, and it works just fine. Uh, I can add some variety and I can add some um, some realism to, to my model you know using that same variety. So the reason why I use my AK products is basically for time saving. It, it's, it's, they're easy to use, they're fast and they're simple. Uh, of course I had to learn how to use them. Um, and I had to learn how to use them and not have the same effect, just like Guido mentioned on his uh, latest video. Um, you do run a risk of having um, these products always providing you with the same results. Now this can be perfectly avoided. You just need to um, use some creativity, uh, mix either some pigments. I, I usually mix pigments with these as well. Uh, it, it's perfectly fine. You can use pigments, you can use a bit of plaster, 
uh, to thicken the mixture. Uh, you can use uh, a number of things. Uh, the sky is the limit. You can even use oils with these. And I think that's what's missing. People just open these bottles and they straight they go straight and use them. Well, I don't do that. What I do usually is either I mix mix between them to get different results, or I, I simply use other products with these. And the layering and the variety of, of, of results you get comes with that same uh, usage. You, you you shouldn't feel limited by using exactly what you have. It's very nice to have a very stable platform, which is what these are. And if I really want to, I can always get the same result. But you're not limited by that. You can usually, you know, mix these with a lot of products, and the results will be just perfect, nice and beautiful. And you'll ha you'll have a different model from what everybody else is doing. Um, I must say that when I start building a model. I usually have more or less uh, an image in my mind of what I want to do with it and what I want it to look like. Uh, and that helps me a lot in mixing the products and it, uh, you know, um, managing to um, get to the result I want. But of course, this is a trial and error uh, process and sometimes I just get things wrong. I have to go back and, and redo them. So um, what I would recommend to anyone that likes to use these products is to experiment with them. Not be limited by their color, their dilution, or um, their marketing. Uh, these are uh, tools such as any other tool and you can use them to that effect. Um, to me, what these are are time savers. Um, I love them. I actually have the full range of AK products uh, and I mean weathering products, not the paints, just the, the weathering products. Um, and I do have them, and I, as you know, they have a few of uh, NATO products, uh, like, uh, like for example, uh, washes for um, NATO uh, camo vehicles. Well, I don't do modern armor, not yet, I haven't done any yet, uh, but I use this. You know, I use this to change the appearance of other products. I use this as a palette. Um, there are many colors of the rainbow, you're not you don't have to use always the same. You can mix them and, you know, get different results. Um, even between layers, I would advise that. I think that's a very nice way to achieve some type of, uh, or some types of uh, uh, results. Uh, so, um, I think, still regarding these products, I want to add a, another thing. I think what Cohen is criticizing, and very and rightly so, is the whole hype around these products. It is as, as, it is as, as if I'm sorry. It is as if people uh, couldn't make models without these, and that goes for the photo etch and aftermarket deal as well. Um, it's like we can't model without these, and he makes a good point in this, which is, yes, you can perfectly build a beautiful model without any of this, I mean any of these products, using just these oils and acrylics. And you don't need these. You don't need these. But they will save you some time. If you don't have time for modeling, okay, I think this is perfectly acceptable. Um, or if you just, you know, want to get into hype, well, you know, you'd be happy to spend your own money. And, um, you know, it's your own money, do with it what you will. But um, it's the hype and the marketing and the trends that exist in every area um, of uh, so many um, hobbies and activities. These trends and these marketing um, um, maneuvers that aren't only bad because they do help um, people that are afraid to experiment with these products. They provide them as a starting point, um, but in between you get a lot of people that think that they cannot model it unless they have the right products. Uh, well, of course I do disagree with that, you can perfectly model without um, these products uh, and do beautiful models. You can watch Cohen's channel and, and see exactly what I'm uh, 
talking about. Um, actually, I've seen many people use these uh, products and basically get really, um, how should I say this, um, um, really flat and bland results without, um, you know, they would, they would exactly be the same as if you mixed one of these washes and apply them to, to your vehicle. So it's, um, I think it's, uh, it's in the creativity and in, in, in how you think of the usage of these products or the use of these products, I'm sorry, uh, that um, the whole thing uh, spins around. Um, I am against the hype. I don't like the hype. Uh, you get very many people, good people that think they're investing good money uh, onto these products that think they will be uh, greatly enhancing their models just because they're using this. Not realizing that the technical part, how do you, how do you use these products is, is extremely important. So uh, that, that's, uh, well I'm rambling on and on, but that's basically it. That's basically what I'm uh, trying to say. Uh, so I wanted to address um, another another um, another part another part of this uh, video, which is I'm sorry, guys. It's, it's, it's I'm trying to remember things. I have a few notes here, but I'm also uh, kind of um, rambling on and on. And I it's, it's, this is this is a first, so uh, you guys excuse me if I'm uh, rambling for too long about the same subject. Uh, like Guido, I try to, I, you know, I tend to trail off easily. <coughs> uh, just to finish off, I want to say, um, I think it was Super Switcher that um, uh, he um, was asking Cohen about his video on washes and all that, uh, which I believe um, is extremely useful, um, and I should, I uh, recommend. Uh, him to, to watch because it's, it is extremely useful. Uh, I just wanted to add that usually the ratios of these products are very simple and in this way I'll kind of leave um, more or less of a note in here. Um, I want to say that um, filters 10% paint, 90% thinner, washes 60% uh, sorry 75% thinner, 25% paint and streaking grime or whatever streaking rust or whatever you want to do usually it's 60% thinner 40% paint of course these numbers are not um, set in stone you can play with them actually that's what you should do is to play with them and to uh, experiment with them experiment with colors um, you don't have to always use earth tones as you can see here you have a green for um, this is um, slimy grime light um, and you, you have green here so that you can experiment with a number of colors um, and, a mo and your models. I also want to recommend if you want to experiment, um, get an old kit, assemble it as fast as you can, don't worry about the cleanup and uh, make it your um, trial and error uh, vehicle for um, experimenting with all these techniques. And once you're um, happy with your techniques, you can apply them to a regular model. Um, and that way you're, uh, you're not going to ruin a perfectly good model. And um, It takes a, a bit longer, but in time you'll get so used to these that you won't, um, that you won't um, need to experiment anymore. So I also wanted to do a few shout outs. Uh, some of them have been due for too long as well, so I'm going to I'm going to address them now. Um, this is, is is also a thank you uh, for all the one for all and everyone that has been watching my videos. I was greatly greatly surprised at the reception of my uh, chipping tutorial. When I uh, filmed it and when I uploaded, I was very much insecure about what what it would um, um, what reactions it would receive. So I was, you know, very 
pleasantly surprised that it was well received. Although I, I do think it's it could have been better, but you know, um, I'm also trying to evolve and into uh, become better at this video um, YouTube. <coughs> Sorry, uh, video and YouTube um, thing. Uh, uh, I've been talking a lot with Andy, uh, Tactical Jackalow, and uh, he's been he's been, I mean, an awesome guy. He's he's an awesome guy. Um, and he's like one of those people that it's uh, wow. He's he's pretty rare. Um, this guy's generous. He's a wonderful guy. So nice to talk to. Um, very very nice. I, I don't I don't even know what to say. He's he's really a wonderful person. And um, oh, and he also knows a ton about artillery and you know, overall military teams he, he knows a lot and he made you uh well you you know your stuff um i've, I've been kidding with him also because he, he knows a lot about airbrushing because he owns several airbrushes and he and he, and he knows uh, a good deal of um uh, about airbrushes, and um, he also likes to experiment a lot with them, and that's that. That's kind of. Um, I think we we learn a lot from his videos about airbrushing, so um, it, it's, it's very nice. I think it's, it's, he's very nice. Uh, I mean, the whole his whole channel, his whole channel is is wonderful. Uh, very nice reviews. Um, great channel updates. Awesome airbrush um, reviews so uh, Andy keep doing those um, uh, I love it so another I want to address another shout out um, another I mean not another a few others <laughs> uh, I want to um, give a shout out to Norm uh, I mean Norm is another of those guys that well uh, the reason I haven't yet done a shout out for Norm or been commenting much on his videos is because, well, mostly my interest lies in Second World War armor. I basically, uh, that's what I like and I mean there's so much to watch on that regard that only recently I started to try and, you know, open, you know, do an actual effort to open my mind and, and look differently to uh, a few other subjects like aircraft or uh, modern armor, um, I, I'm even thinking about acquiring maybe a, a, a kid up too. Um, so I went on his channel and wow, his his models are just awesome. I mean uh, for you guys this is no news, you, you know Norm, but I have to express my, my awe. Norm is not... Well, excuse me guys, uh, I had to do a memory dump, my camera just, um, uh, just, no, just uh, got uh, memory full, so I had to um, uh, dump the, the file and then just, you know, I was interrupted in my shout out to Norm, so I'll, uh, I'll keep, uh, I'll just um, continue from there, uh, so I, I want to, um, like I said, I want to, uh, you know, uh, say to Norm, wow, Norm, your stuff is awesome. I, oh, wow, I love, I love your, um, your modern armor builds. Uh, your, I mean, I'm not also, I'm not into sci-fi and, and all that, but your uh, sci-fi stuff also no, looks really nice. Um, and, uh, well, I'll be watching you uh, more and more because uh, it's it's well it's uh, it's like um, learn as you go you know uh, so ever since I got into this community it's it's learning as I go along um, and it's, it's everything's been so wonderful so and it's nice to know that it's way more to do, to discover uh, along the way so uh, Norm uh, uh, I don't know how to spell this uh, le joie maybe so uh, you tell me norm and um yeah, please check out his channel uh also um 
uh, I want to extend a shout out to uh, Storm Twenty Two TPT because um, you know um, in the same way I've uh, watched Norm's videos, I've also watched Storm's videos, and uh, wow, also awesome, awesome modeler, uh, great stuff. Um, of course, I had heard of him and had even watched a few of his tutorials. Um, but I went back to his channels the same way I went back to Norm's uh, channel and had a look-see to uh, a few more videos and wow, uh, another one that blows me away. Um, so uh, check out his channel uh, because it's, it's uh, wow, well, I know he's, he's been a bit offline now uh, for a while. Uh, I think it's... Um, because of uh, personal uh, life issues, so I'm just hoping that he comes back later on and, and keeps us um, amazed with his models. Uh, I want to do another shout out um, to um, Darren, Darren Chank. Um, I've exchanged a few PMs with Darren, um, and uh, I've been. Wow, I've been amazed at his um, uh, good will and character. Uh, I mean, Darren seems to be this really nice guy that, you know, um, is just, I mean, he's, he's polite, he's um, a very um, overall nice guy, he's very generous. And uh, he really is active in the community, and, and I, well, he's um, I like him, and um, I've been um, accompanying off and on a few of his builds. Uh, he also has this ability to to be on several, um, you know, building several stuff at the same time. Like he's doing aircraft, he's doing uh, tanks, um, he's doing cars. Um, well, I, I admire that uh, elasticity. To uh, being able to uh, go on several subjects, um, so uh, a big shout out to Darren. Uh, he's a wonderful guy. You should uh, watch his channel as well. And also, he's been he's been the the um, he's been the, the guy that was responsible for the Secret Santa uh, initiative and, and group build and. Wow, that reached far and large, so uh, very admirable, uh, Darren. Um, I know you had some trouble with a few uh, guys, but you know, it's uh, like everything in life sometimes, uh, you know, things can't just be perfect, so we also always have a few uh, uh, hiccups here and there. But you should maybe do this again because th this was a big community builder, in my opinion. Uh, the Secret Center um, initiative and group build was a way to exchange uh, not only gifts but um, get to know one another and then create a bonding experience between the modelers that uh, actually participated. If you ever do this again, I'll be I'll be um, on it for sure. Um, another guy I'd like to um, do, do a shout out is uh, Guido Hop. Um, he's been doing uh, a few other, a few uh, wonderful videos. I share Cohen's opinion; they are great. Um, I like, I like his uh, his um, sit-ins uh, very much. Um, they're extremely entertaining, very interesting, and, and very um, relaxed. And, and, and I mean, the amount of uh, the range of themes he covers and the way he speaks is, is really nice, so I like them. Um, I had, um, when I started to go on YouTube to watch modeling videos, even before I joined the community, I had seen a couple of his videos um, on uh, ships, I believe. I think one of them was building a diorama of a ship on the water, and I was amazed at what things he did, how he was able to pull off some type of effects and um, I knew he, he was a great 
a great modeler. Uh, just, well, just um, chips are not my thing, so I didn't really took uh, note back then. Um, but when I joined the community, I started to uh, subscribing every every modeler I admired and liked, and um, he he of course is one of them. So um, I subscribed to his channel, and I like a few of his features now, um, like builds from the past and, and the, the sit-ins. Um, so uh, Guido, um, also thank you for uh, mentioning me in your latest video, and uh, I hope you keep on doing those sit-ins. Um, I know I'll, I'll probably be <laughs> a bit flamed for saying what I'm going to say, but if you can make him longer, be my guest, because I can listen to you for hours. Um, so uh, another guy I wanted to uh, address and um, acknowledge um, is, uh, of course, a uh, cornerstone of our community which is Hamilker, um, uh, I think uh, my, uh, he's, he's called Michael, he's from Germany and everyone knows Hamilker Barkas so it's, it's uh, no need to uh, uh, introduce, introduce him to the community or anything. Uh, this is more of an acknowledgement than a shout out. It's, it's, it's an acknowledgement that, um, I mean, the work he does and he did uh, and he's, he keeps on doing is awesome um, and so many uh, scopes and, uh, so, and a large range of, of, of subjects and uh, also of um, reaches. Uh, I mean he's, his videos are very educational and very uh, interesting. Uh, they're simple, they're to the point, I admire that. Um, it's a different style than my own. I'm, well. That's how it is, but uh, I love to watch his videos, and, and I think uh, everyone should watch his videos because he's, he's and probably does. <laughs> but his, his his stuff is great um, for such a young guy. I mean, wow, really, really, really nice um, um, channel and and and, and um, builds. They're great, Mod great models. Also wanted to uh, give a shout out to uh, Super Switched um, Switcher uh, is the name he goes by. Um, uh, I've I've watched his um, video on his one thirty fifth scale um, Centurion, I think, with full interior. And oh, I so want to have I so want to have that kit. Oh, that thing looks good. Um, it looks really nice. And then um, he comes out and shows uh, a beautiful turned aluminum, I think it's turned aluminum gun barrel he made himself. Wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> that would be nice. I mean, uh, do you take uh, custom orders? Because uh, me and Ed have been talking and uh, a few of our kids could use uh, those uh, barrels. <laughs> And it, yours just look perfect and, and beautiful. So, um, also like his way, is uh, you know, straight to the point, um, and, and um, very open, I think. And uh, um, he seems to be uh, eager to learn. I, I like to see that. I think that's that's something. Uh, which, which, is, which is very admirable, admirable, sorry. Uh, um, translation isn't always, um, <laughs> the, doesn't always uh, go well. Um, uh, I also wanted to give a shout out to um, a very nice overall guy and, 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 and modeler, it's, he's called uh, on, on YouTube, it's called Ion757. Uh, uh, he's Pete, and I just want to I just want to acknowledge something. Uh, not only the amount of builds he does, but the range also. I mean, Second World War, Vietnam, you name it. Uh, aircraft, tanks. I, I haven't seen ships, but probably he does them. Um, you know, dioramas, buildings. Um, he does everything, and, and also, I like the way he presents his videos. Uh, 
the amount of photographs he puts in, the, 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 the camera angles he chooses. Um, well, uh, I think uh, Pete, you're uh, you're a um, very nice builder, and um, I like your I like your videos. Um, and you get some really nice results as well. So uh, that's Iron757, uh, Pete. Um, have a look in, in, on, his, uh, on his channel as well. So uh, I'll be probably doing a few more of these um, um, if this works works well or if it's, I don't know. We'll see. Um, uh, Sorry guys, I'm so a bit rambling. It's just, it's my first time, so it's it's like Guido said. It's it's a matter of practicing, I think. Uh, I'll take the um, this opportunity to, to do a small channel update, um, a very very short update. I haven't done anything uh, on my on my D-Day group build yet. Anything else besides what was already on the updates. I'm still waiting on a metal gun barrel for my Tiger 1 uh, for the Nigel Wells North Africa group build. And as soon as it arrives, I'll start that one as well. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to stop my uh, Steel Rain group build um, uh, build for a while because um, this model has been mixed between pain and pleasure. And sometimes it's I love to work on him. On it, but other times I just can't even look at it, and it's been uh, uh, when it, when it starts to get to this point. Um, I know I should, I know I should stop for a while. Um, and I was uh, skyping with Andy yesterday, and he, and he, you know, he stopped me and told me, "Hey, dude, dude, you should, you should, maybe you should start a new project. Where you're getting a bit burned on." On this, on this build, and you know, I actually agree with him very much, and I think he was very wise to tell me that. I will, um, I will stop this for just a few days. Um, it's almost there. Uh, only thing missing is the rest of the base, and um, a few props I want to have on it, and uh, the chain. And I would like to also, um, regarding the chain, I would like to. Um, to ask a question to the community. Anyone that can answer me this, I would thank you very much. If someone is still listening, because like, I don't know, maybe 50 minutes long this video is now, is it's, um, well, I don't know if anyone's going to listen to this, but anyway, if somebody does, I think what I have here is a brass or maybe copper chain, I'm not sure. Um, I'd like to know if I use the burnishing liquids, such as AK's burnishing liquids that people use with photo edge or uh, metal tracks, would this rust this uh, material or these chains? I'm, I'm very interested in knowing that because I've never tried those liquids and I think that would be a very nice way to achieve the effect I want uh, without me having to paint them. Um, I could just, you know, uh, use that liquid to achieve the effect I want. So if, if somebody can tell me about that, I would thank you uh, very much. Um, and I would love to know that. So um, that's it, guys. Um, well, I hope you like this. This was a bit of a jumble of themes and subjects and shoutouts, but. Uh, That's it. I hope you like this, guys. Uh, please leave a comment or uh, state your mind and uh, tell me what you think. Thanks, guys.